Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Once again, um, we're going to get started with the webinar and today's topic is should I downsize or stay in my home? And I'm Carrie Gatto. I'm a realtor with about 11 years experience uh, in the greater Boston area with Keller Williams Realty in the Cambridge Somerville office. And today I'm joined by uh, two wonderful ladies and experts in their fields. I have Wendy Tatlock, who is a senior living advisor and expert, and she is with Care Patrol, and Susan DeRozzi, who is a very experienced nurse and expert in aging in place. She works with uh, Northeast Care Management. So welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for lending us your expertise. Thank you. And actually, thank you. You're, you're welcome. And actually, we're going to start today's presentation with Susan. Um, she is going to speak first, uh, seeing as though many people who are faced with this choice often, you know, prefer to stay in their home if at all possible and if it makes sense. Um, and by the way, I'm going to, so I'm going to hand it over to Susan, but by the way, we are, uh, we are very happy to answer your questions. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Or at you know, certain times during the presentation, we'll ask you to unmute and um, we'll ask you if you have any questions. So uh, we're definitely looking for your input. And let me stop my share, Susan. Hopefully you go. All right. And I am going to start mine. <laughs> All right, can everyone see everything okay? Yep. Okay. Um, my name is um, Sue DeRazio and I work with Tracy Valetti, who is um, the founder owner of Northeast Care Management. Um, we are geriatric care managers. So the question is, should I downsize or stay in my home? Um, this is for seniors in transition or aging in place. What is a geriatric care manager? A geriatric care manager is usually a licensed nurse or social worker who specializes in geriatrics. The National Institute on Aging calls a GCM a sort of professional relative who can help you and your family identify needs and find ways to meet your needs. What is care management and what do we do? Care management is a process that is a team-based, holistic, person-centered approach designed to assist individuals and their support systems in managing medical conditions more effectively. The goals of care management are to improve the functional health status of our clients, enhance coordination of care, eliminate duplication of services, reduce the need for expensive medical services, and increase patient engagement for increased independency. Um, it, involves advocacy and crisis support, establishing care coordination with ac um, activities to manage current status and goals, memory care consultations and education, home safety assessment and preserving independence, provide caregiver stress relief and options, education, transition and residential options, recreational therapy, dietary consultations, family interventions. Some signs for when seniors um, need our help, um, recent falls, chronic or worsening health problems, difficulty managing medications, problems completing activities of daily living, their ADLs, poor eating habits, hygiene issues, new or worsening mobility issues, decreased driving competency, inability to manage their home or their yard, pets seem, seem neglected, 
Your loved ones get lost or disoriented outside of the home. Changes in mood or aggressive behavior. They just seem unhappy. They're disconnected. Um, they've begun to isolate themselves. They don't have access to a community um, support system or regular visits from their loved ones, family, friends. Friends and neighbors have expressed concerns. Their current caregiver is suffering from burnout. They just can't do it anymore. I need help. Why do people choose to work with a GCM when they are caring for an aging parent, facing a crisis with a loved one, not near to their loved one? They may live on the other part of the country or several states away, or they're just, they um, just cannot get um, involved. Managing their own healthcare issues, trying to juggle work and family, noticing an inability for their loved one to manage simple tasks, experiencing difficult behaviors, in need of coordination from um, multiple specialists, concern for their safety, noticing an inability to manage their medications, finances, or appointments, unsure how to navigate the healthcare system, worried because their loved one has suffered, has um, had multiple hospitalizations and trying to navigate difficult transitions between settings. A GCM, we're solution driven. Listed below are common responsibilities you may be handling from, um, for your family member after he or she comes home from a hospitalization or when in declining health and ability. Personal care, bathing, eating, dressing, toileting, household care, cooking, cleaning, laundry and shopping, health care management, um, medication management, physician's appointments, physical therapy, wound treatment, injections, metal, medical equipment, and techniques. Emotional care, companionship, meaningful um, activities, conversation. A GCM can help with transitions and assist with the coordination of set, uh, services from one setting to another. Services for a step assessment and evaluation. Um, care manage management is a multi-tiered process and our staff will work to provide you with a comprehensive evaluation. After the initial consultation with the family, we will visit the elder in the setting of your choice, home, hospital, rehab. There we will conduct an in-depth comprehensive evaluation of the physical, cognitive, and emotional help of your loved one. Our compass point needs assessment and mapping tool is a holistic approach that uncovers medical history, care needs, medical status, financial status, fi family dynamics, personal interest, short and long-term goals, and the support systems are um, needed are identified. The second step, the care plan and recommendations based on our findings from the Compass Point Needs Assessment and Mapping Tool, we will begin to make our recommendations. We will develop a written plan of care adapted to the individual's needs and goals. We are creative and solution driven to promote and attain the highest level of independence. The recommendations will identify appropriate options for care and selection of providers such as visiting nurses, home care agencies, assisted living, nursing home facilities, and other resources. The third step, continuing in intermittent care management. Once the assessment and care plan are in place, continuing and in intermittent consultations are offered on short term and long-term basis. Many family rely on these services and oversight as they are often not local. They find the healthcare system confusing and they are juggling their own work and family. We can engage in crisis situations, 
provide advocacy and management of those situations and provide referrals, arrangements and recommendations to address medical or behavioral changes to meet the needs of the individuals and families. We can provide ongoing monitoring and management to reflect and update and communicate the changes and needs of the situation or new changes to all individuals and professionals involved. Other services, we have a registered dietitian, ther um, a therapeutic dietary assessment. Uh, nutrition is a key component, component for a healthy lifestyle, but yet requirements differ in older adults due to physiological changes and, um, as people age. Many seniors and adults with complex medical issues have dietary restrictions, um, low sodium, um, low sugar, diabetic diets. Um, maintaining a proper diet helps to lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, promote more energy and cognitive health to name just a few of the advantages. A registered dietitian will meet with you and we'll collaborate with the team to fully learn your medical history and other facets of your life to assess. She will then make recommendations to develop a healthy and customized menu that ensures proper nutrition is being met. Based on your needs, we will also shop for your loved one, provide recommendations for personal chefs or delivered meals catered around your specific needs. Another service is recreational therapy. Recreational therapy and activity program is a supportive approach that utilizes recreation and other activity-based interventions designed to meet the needs of older adults and those with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. A qualified staff member will work to provide a specific program designed to meet your loved one's own interests and will work with community resources to offer the widest range of options available for your loved one. When someone has dementia, creating a calendar can be very beneficial to provide the structure that is needed for successful outcomes. If the individual has um, PT exercises, we can integrate um, those physical therapy um, with their daily program um, to provide continuity. The activity calendar will provide engagement with the caregiver and their client. This adjunct service to care management promotes the six dimensions of wellness, intellectual, physical, emotional, occupational, social, and spiritual pursuits. Our partners, collaborations, hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, assisted living communities, home health care agencies, VNAs, hospice, ASAPs, Council on Aging Centers, primary care practices, attorneys, wealth advisors and senior planners, real estate specialists, private chefs, home organizers, bill paying services. Placement, when is the right time? It's a very personal and individual decision for each person and families. Um, cost of home care agencies and the costs of maintaining the home start to deplete resources. The, um, you're out of scope for home care and you do not want to wait too long. Organizations and um, associations, um, National Council of Certified Dementia Practitioners, Case Management Society of America, Aging Life Care Association member. Uh, Northeast Care Management offers a 30-minute um, consultation to discuss your situation and key concerns. We will discuss how to develop a customized plan to meet your needs. We do a compliment. This is a complimentary um, consultation. We truly want to help you and your family navigate through the immediate challenges you fa you're facing. Thank you. Any questions? 
I'm going to stop the share now. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so um, my name is Wendy. I am going to share now. Um, so, um, hi, so it's nice to see everyone. Um, should I stay or should I go? My name is Wendy Tatlock. I have a company called Care Patrol. Um, I'm an expert in assisted living and what, you know, what, what it makes sense and, and um, how to go about the process uh, and other senior living options in the, in the North Shore. Um, the, uh, so let's see how can I can page down. Yay. I help seniors and their families find affordable, safe housing um, that is the right thing for them. And I provide very um, personalized service. So I work with individual families to find their right situation. And my, my services are, are free to families. I'm paid by a community if someone moves in. Um, but I'm happy to talk to anyone uh, for free at any time and connect them with the right resources, whether assisted living is, is right for you or not. But I'm here today to talk about, um, about senior housing and, and whether it might be uh, give you a little more background, what, how much does it really cost, what really are the options out there and that kind of thing and help you decide um, and, and plan for the future um, to see if that, that's right for you. Um, I, um, okay. So when, when thinking about senior housing, okay, and I work with a lot of families who are both in crisis trying to think about senior housing, but also helping people plan for senior housing for the future. And so regardless of whether you're longer term planning or um, thinking about an issue right now, there's really four main um, key variables to think through. So, so think about these things first. Um, so uh, there's um, city, I call them four C's, city care, cost, and culture. Um, and so I'm going to talk about those here. So city, first, obviously, geographically, that's one of the first things to zero in on your options. Are there family members you want to be near? Is there a church you want to be near? Is the, are there friends um, in a community? That kind of thing. So number one, identify, think through how far are you willing to, to move or are you really focused on an area? Um, number two, care. This is, in my mind, really the most important variable. What do you need help with? Because different places provide different levels of help, and different places provide different levels of help over time, too. Some are good at and really specialize on just sort of a little help in the beginning and more of a social kind of aspect. Some help with, with all sorts of things, really almost to the point of um, a nursing home. And so it's important when thinking about your options and thinking through your options to push yourself, do I need help with activities of living? Or do I have memory care needs? Do I have medical needs? Or do I have needs because of an acute situation? And your answer to these four different questions will drive totally different answers in terms of what kind of community might be a good, good fit for you. Um, cost. Obviously, cost is a big factor. Um, so in order to think about what you can afford, um, think through what is your income, think through these different variables, these seven variables separately, because um, different things, um, different answers in these, different, different places have different opportunities um, for different financial structures, right? So what is your income? What is your assets? What is your current monthly budget? What is your home value? There are a lot of options out there for special discounts for veterans. Um, there are also really neat options these days for even cashing out life insurance policies and if they're term policies and, and long-term care insurance as well. Um, and then the final variable that I think really matters is culture. So um, do you like something upscale and high-end? Are you an extrovert? Do you wanna be around a ton of people? Do you prefer to be um, more independent uh, reading? Are you one of the bingo crowd? Do you like bingo? Do you prefer lecture series? Do you want a great big space? Are you okay with a smaller space that costs less? And so there are all sorts of different types of communities around the area um, that have all these different cultures. And again, I help people find the right right fit and there is a right fit fit for everyone. And, and I'd also say, don't necessarily um, look at people's websites because the websites I don't find in reality to be a great indication on what, what the actual culture is at, at any given place. Um, so, but they really do vary. Um, and I do have one more slide to think about budget because 
it's such a key piece of this. People think assisted living is so expensive and, and it's not cheap, don't get me wrong, but it includes virtually everything. So another way to think about your budget is what do I currently pay for all these different services, rent, property taxes, repairs, um, other home services, groceries, eating out, um, transportation, because pretty much all of these things are included when you move to senior living. Um, different places include more things versus less things. But um, anyways, just you'd be surprised if you add up how much you're spending on 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 all of these now. Um, a, a lot of people do find they, they can afford senior living that that it is a lot less expensive in comparison than they thought. Um, okay. So I'm now going to talk about three different types of senior living options because um, they're very different. And I find when I talk to people, there's a lot of confusion about them. And again, I'm all about fit, right? I mean, I work with, I personally work with over 100 communities in Northeast Massachusetts, but I also work with colleagues all over the country who work with others. And again, they're the thousands. And, and so it's all about fit and finding the right fit. And the more aware you are about yourself and your needs, um, the better, it, the easier it is to find a fit. But I'm gonna talk you through three very different types of senior living that um, I find there's a lot of misunderstanding around, okay? First, I'm gonna talk about CCRCs, Continuing Care Retirement Communities, also assisted living in, and then nursing homes. Okay, CCRCs. These are the places that have a buy-in. Um, so in the Northeast Boston area, the buy-in can be from 100,000 at the least expensive place to well over a million. And so you have that, that equity piece, that buy-in, but then you also have um, a, a monthly fee as well that covers um, food and activities. But then if you need care, there's an additional cost. So this is sort of the most expensive um, senior living option, but it's, it's great for certain people. Um, and these tend to be the ones too that have a big campus. So, um, and there's only probably a dozen in the entire greater Boston area. So um, it, that's what they are. Um, okay, now I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of CCRCs. Like I said, they're great for some people, not for others. CCRCs are fabulous for people who are relatively young and healthy and independent, like people in their seventies, it's ideal for um, maybe early eighties if you're in great shape. They, if for people who have absolutely plenty of money and want to be around like-minded people, um, but without the overhead and stress of owning a home. So, um, because they have an awful lot of services, um, you live in your own townhouse, they have everything on the campus, you have people like you, you get some meals a day, but you also have your kitchen to make your own meals and they're great activities. So again, these are great for people that are in great shape. You, you really have to have very high mobility because you're on a big campus and it's hard to get from point A to point B if, if, if you don't. There are people with plenty of money, they're in good shape and they wanna be around like-minded people. The, the negatives are, they're not great for people, you know, around, you've got the expensive buy-in, you know, say you put down a half million dollars, most places you lose 10% uh, of that across the top. Um, so, so that can be expensive. Another key thing people don't often understand is that care is not included. You still have to pay for and manage your own care if you need care and bring it into your apartment. There's also often a very long waiting list. Um, and um, it, and if, if you are going to bring in care, you still have to manage those caregivers. Um, one of the biggest, one of the last points I want to make is one of the things I find is most often understood about, misunderstood about CCRCs, and that is this whole idea of continuing care, right? So yes, they have um, nursing homes on site. Yes, they have assisted living on site. But what I find in practice is that um, their, their money and focus is really on the independent living. And sometimes um, if you have special needs or higher needs, they can't really meet your needs and you've got all this money tied up in there. And so you lose some flexibility there. And I, I end up helping people move out sometimes. That doesn't happen to everyone, but it's just something you should go into um, knowing that um, if you're really interested in a CCRC. Um, assisted living and memory care is different than a CCRC. 
um, assisted livings are more like one building rather than a whole campus. Um, the the cost range is typically actually 2,500 is low. Cost range really from like 4,000 to 13,000 a month. Um, sometimes there are financial aid programs, but these are really um, structured for people who need help with activities of daily living sometimes more help than that. And there's also a lot of independent people living in assisted living too, because there's just an awful lot of services available. Um, the pros here is that you can get all the help you want with your activities of daily living. Um, from You don't have to manage caregivers to do that. And, and they're not on a big campus like a CCRC. Um, also, compared to home care at home, I mean, Sue talked about this a little bit and the trade offs financially. You know, we talked about here assisted living can be between, you know, typically between four and eight thousand a month. There's dementia involved, it's closer to ten thousand. But the way to think about the trade off with home care so if home care is running, call it thirty to thirty five dollars an hour with a four to eight hour minimum, you know, around the clock home care is around twenty thousand dollars a month. So if you need around the clock home care, assisted living is definitely gonna be um, less expensive. If you just need a little bit of care, a few hours, a few days a week, bringing care into your home is, is more appropriate. And so then, you know, once you get into three or four days a week um, of, of care, eight hours a day, it starts to look more attractive. Um, it makes more sense to do assisted living. You lose the headache and, and you, you save money. Um, Another, uh, some other, uh, one often missed huge pro of assisted living is the um, socialization. People um, I, in COVID, I'm sure a lot of you saw it, um, it, people get lonely in their home. And assisted living, it's just so nice to meet people. Even if you're not an activity person, um, just eating three meals a day and going to a chair yoga class and going to movie night, you... Um, you meet a lot of people and people get along and, and it's, it's just really nice. I've seen people really thrive in assisted living that were lonely at home. Um, and then you also get the peace of mind of daily check-ins, not managing caregivers. You're, you're, it's just great for your family. The negatives are it, it, it does absolutely cause something, but again, almost all the expenses included. The personal space is smaller. Um, you have an apartment. It's a studio, one bedroom, maybe a two bedroom. Um, but you also have to think about the whole building is your home too. Um, and so there's a lot of beautiful communal space in, in most of the assisted livings. Um, and, and then some people worry about privacy, but really your apartment is your apartment and you're independent. And um, so you can engage with people as much as you want. The final type of senior living I wanna talk about is a nursing home because I it's it's not really senior housing in my mind, but I find there are so many people confused about the difference between a nursing home and assisted living. I, I'm gonna say a few words. Um, nursing homes really provide the highest level of care available in Massachusetts. And there's really only a couple of scenarios where you need a nursing home other than as a rehab after say a fall or a heart attack or something like that. If you have high level of medical needs like needing daily injections or wound care, a nursing home might be appropriate. But most other types of care needs can be accommodated in Massachusetts in assisted living in an environment that is a whole lot nicer. And um, nursing homes are, are also for people who have absolutely no money and um, because the government through MassHealth, Medicaid will pick it up um, if you meet the requirements medically. Um, but uh, if you have to private pay longer term, it is more like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month these days for a really tough environment, quite honestly, compared to assisted living. Um, so again, positive is if you need that higher level of of care, it's there for you. If you really, if your family member or you really can't afford anything else, it's there for you. Um, you don't have to manage caregivers. There's meals included. But again, it's a very medical environment. Many people are bedridden um, and, and it's very expensive if, if Medicare is not paying. Um, the, the final point I'm gonna make is that you are in control of your options if you plan ahead. If you don't, your options become limited. So if you want a CCRC, wait list can be two to three years and you, can, you have to be completely healthy and independent to be accepted. Um, that that's that's important. So again, plan ahead for that. 
um, they do an assessment and, and you have to be independent. For an assisted living, um, you, the benefit of planning ahead is that you can get accepted in more places. There are a lot of places that allow you to age in place and will take care of really high level of needs and help bring in hospice and everything, but only if you're already there. If you have already a high level of needs, like um, you need a two person assist or, or that kind of thing, or other high needs, it's a much smaller subset of assisted living communities that, that will accept you. There are very good ones, but it just your, your choices are limited. And then finally, even with skilled nursing, it's important to plan ahead. Um, if you're gonna need that high level of medical care to get into a good one, you do need to plan to private pay for three to six months at call it 15 to $20,000 a month in order to get on a waiting list to get accepted at the, at the best nursing homes. Um, and, and so again, I can't say enough about planning ahead. Um, that is all I have to say. I see a question in the chat here. Um, does the person occupying the CCRC have any actual property ownership? It is so they do. So in a CCRC, there is an equity situation. In a CCRC, you do the buy-in and um, you do have property ownership. Um, it's not purely a rental. And so I work with families a lot to work through the difference. Um, it do is a buy-in more appropriate, or I also work with different independent living communities that have a similar, some similar benefits to CCRCs where it is a rental model. And it's a very personal situation, personal preference, and depends on everyone's situation in terms of which of those models is, is right for you. There are financial consequences, there are care consequences and that kind of thing. So I'm happy to talk to anyone offline about, about that trade-off. But yeah, in a CCRC, I, I think, it, there is an equity um, position that you, how can I say, it's interesting the wording here, it's um, it's not exactly like owning your home, it's like owning a townhouse, it's like owning okay. a townhouse, yeah. Gotcha, cool, thanks. Yeah, any other questions? I could talk all day on, <laughs> on this, um, <laughs> but it, it, you know, um, but so, um, I have one more than if no one else does. No, no question. Um, yeah. It's a huge subject. So like maybe just the very high level, but you mentioned yeah. Medicaid, right? There's a threshold for Medicaid and maybe yeah. Mass Health in our state, but you didn't say yeah. anything about Medicare and yeah. sort of where that slots in. So if we all make it to 65, is there any yeah. support there? Go ahead. Yeah. So Medicare uh, will only pay for um, a rehab, a nursing home, if you've had a medical incident. So um, otherwise, no senior lip, Medicare doesn't pay for anything. So it's all private pay. Um, again, if you have a fall and you go to a rehab or a nursing home for a period of time, Medicare pays for that after you discharge from a hospital. But after that, everything is, is private pay. Okay, thanks. There, there are some programs um, that you can qualify for, but they're very rare and they're nuanced. There's a program called PACE that um, is... Uh, Anyway, but there are very few programs. It, you, you sort of have to assume it's all private pay at those um, at those price ranges I, I mentioned for planning purposes. Yeah. If, if you have a personal, if like you're working with your parents in a very specific personal situation, I can talk offline and see if there's anything. But it, it, you know, in the heat of COVID, there was a lot, and there were a lot more empty beds. There were a lot more programs that were available right now places have um, more filled up and, and there just aren't as many low-income programs. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Anyone else? Sorry, my dog is whining in the background. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wendy. That was a great overview, very informational. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I'll stop sharing. Okay, I'll start my share. Um, and I just want to preface <laughs> my portion that I'm my Wi Fi is a little shaky right now, it seems. So hopefully I won't have any issues. But if I do, I'll be right back. <laughs> um, so um, once again, I'm Carrie Gatto with Keller Williams Realty in the Cambridge Somerville office. And I've been working full time in the greater Boston area for 11 years. And um, I really enjoy uh, 
educating clients and bringing them resources such as today's experts to make sure that my prospects and my clients can really make educated decisions. So that's why uh, we're here today. So uh, I'm gonna obviously talk about real estate um, and whether you, you know, do choose to move into assisted living or if your parents or family members are, are thinking about it or into another home, um, I can definitely assist with the, with the transition and with bringing you the information that you might need just to make that decision. And one of the biggest questions that um, I find people face when they are um, considering downsizing um, is that they don't know where to go. And that's even been more of a question on, on people's minds in the past couple of years with the very low inventory situation and hot sellers market. No one wants to end up displaced or homeless or having to move twice. So I just want to approach that right away. Um, and one of the first things we'll do, if you are thinking of buying another home, uh, we'll do a buyer interview either in person or over Zoom. And um, we'll just talk about, you know, first of all, what are your must haves? What are the deal breakers that if everything else were perfect, that, um, that would be a deal breaker. So the things that absolutely have to be in place for you to consider buying a home. And then we'll also talk about the wish list items. Like if you had, you know, everything you dream of, what would that look like? And, you know, even though this can sometimes feel like a scary transition, just like all change can feel scary, it can also be exciting. So this is when I want you to just tell me um, what you're looking forward to. You know, maybe you're looking forward to a smaller home that doesn't require as much maintenance, um, you know, or as much housework. And what would you do with that extra time? Um, or, you know, as Wendy was saying, a lot of times people get lonely in their home if they're by themselves and maybe you're looking forward to being in, you know, more of a communal setting in a, an assisted living environment where you have activities always going on and people that you can socialize with. Um, I know for my grandmother, that was um, a super positive thing um, when she transitioned to an assisted living home. And of course, we'll talk about locations. We'll talk about amenities that are important to you, um, you know, your medical, um, your medical needs and, and, and your service providers and um, what's important to you about that. And we'll also have to talk about, you know, price point and what makes sense for you. And if you are selling a home, the home that you currently live in, then yeah, it's obviously super helpful to know what the market value of your home is. And I want to stress that even if you've gotten an appraisal or a market analysis, you know, let's say a year ago, even six months ago, it's important to have one that's up to date, at least, you know, in the past six months, because the market, especially right now, is changing really quickly. Um, and so it never hurts to have an up to date market analysis. And it is no obligation and no pressure. I'm not gonna show up at your door with a line of buyers uh, looking to buy your home, don't worry. And um, and it's again, about 30 minutes just for your own information. In fact, even if you list your home, that's not an obligation to sell. That's just uh, saying, you know, that's just inviting offers and seeing what you could get for your home. Um, so, you know, some people will ask me, well, if I list the home, does that mean I have to sell it if I get my asking price? Well, no, it doesn't. You're never obligated to sell until you actually sign an offer that absolutely 100% works for you in terms of pricing and terms. So rest assured about that. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you are using the equity in your in your current home to purchase your next home, which a lot of people are, um, you can still sell first and buy second and do so without risk, risking being homeless. And that's the way I recommend doing it because we are in a seller's market. So the benefit is that you'll have your current home under agreement. You'll know the price that you're going to get. It'll be in a contract, a legal legally binding contract with your buyer. Um, and then you will be able to be a much stronger buyer on the purchasing side because you have that contract saying that 
the equity will be available to you to purchase the next home. Um, without doing that, if you're trying to use the equity uh, to buy, but you haven't yet sold your existing home, you're going to run into a lot of issues in this market because sellers are not going to be willing to really seriously consider your offer um, when they see that you know it's subject to selling your your existing home. But don't worry because we can make the listing of your current home subject to finding a suitable new house that you love. And so that means that the sale is actually contingent on you finding a home that you love. And um, if you don't find it, you can actually terminate the deal, withdraw, withdraw from the sale, and there's no repercussions or um, fees. So it really puts you in the driver's seat and you can take, you know, uh, we'll have to put a time frame on it when we get to the purchase and sale um, with the buyer of your home, but it could be um, anywhere from like one to six months to find your new home. And keep in mind too, that on average, the typical transaction is between 45 and 60 days. So that's already that built in too, and it and your home might take some time on the market, you know, it might not sell without having to move twice. So when you put all these uh, strategies together, you could be looking at anywhere from five to six months or even longer if you need it from, you know, from actually putting your home on the market to moving out. So, you know, um, don't think that the moment you decide to list your home, it's going to be like that. You can stretch this timeline as needed and make it work for you. And I've done it successfully with many other sellers. So it can be done. Um, the other thing is it's really never too early to get the conversation started. Uh, even if you're not in conversation and see maybe what could be done between now and then to maybe improve the market value because why not, you know, in, in, uh, increase your bottom line or just to get the lay of the land and see what the market dynamic is, what factors to take into consideration, you know, what does it look like on the buy side for you or are you leaning towards one of um, the other options that um, Susan and Wendy talked about. So having that conversation is definitely never a bad idea. There might be resources or things that you didn't think about that could come into play and you could be more prepared. And of course, um, a lot of people too, uh, who are thinking about downsizing are really overwhelmed by the fact that they just have too much stuff. You know, maybe they've been in the home for decades. It's a family home and, um, and it's a whole house worth of stuff that they think about getting rid of or you know, boxing and packing. Um, so very common concern. And see, these are some suggestions that I have um, for you. One is to just determine a timeline. Um, you know, what what is your ideal time or date that you want to move out? Um, you know, are you thinking about a year from now or six months from now, whatever it is, put it in the calendar and, um, and then you'll have a plan. You'll, you'll be able to relax a little bit because you are in control. You have a plan and something to work towards. And then from there, start chunking it down. Maybe you work on one room. Every Did we lose Carrie? I think so. Oh no. Does anyone have any questions while we're waiting? Oh, there she is. Oh. Hi, apologies. <laughs> so sorry. Um, as I was saying, okay, I am so sorry. Um, um, an, an estate plan and a will in place, a good idea to do it right now. Um, you definitely don't want your home to be going through probate. Um, so make sure that you take care of that um, if needed. And, um, and also I wanna just, from my own experience, I want to say that I found that if you have multiple children, I found nine times out of 10, it really works best to sell the home and disperse the proceeds as cash rather than to 
um, pass down a property to your kids. Um, and that's just because it's very common for kids to have different goals and different needs. And, you know, and, and the worst case scenario is that, you know, kids are having to, um, you know, have a disagreement about the property and the best use of the property if they want to hold it or sell it. So I think most of the time, even for close knit families, it makes sense to actually liquidate or sell the property. Um, if that's, you know, if you're, if you're planning to do that. So, um, just my two cents, but it does seem to work best in my experience. And, um, Wendy mentioned life insurance a little earlier. It's also just something to keep in mind too, as part of your estate plan. So to wrap it up in summary, um, you know, as part of my service, I'm here to help you maximize the value of your current home. And again, you know, starting that conversation earlier is always a good thing. And of course, to negotiate a better price on your new home on the terms and with the timeline that works for you and to coordinate both transactions seamlessly and smoothly so that you can really focus on your life and your move and what's important. You know, once you list your home with me, I'll take care of all the real estate details with my network and, um, you know, put you in good hands so that you can really focus on your own life. Client testimonial there. Um, yeah. And so as Susan and Wendy had said, I also, you know, we all offer free consultations. We're here to help you and um, would love to talk to you one on one. So don't hesitate to reach out. Um, that's my cell phone and my email. And, um, and yeah, because everyone's situation is uh, specific and unique. Happy to talk one on one whenever it's convenient. But if anyone has any questions right now, um, I'm, we're, we're all here. So we have a few minutes. And thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Really much appreciated. Stop my share. Okay. And again, this will be sent out as a link to view the recording too. And um, we'll make sure you have our contact information. So, um, Carrie and Wendy, I just, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Sue. Oh, hi. No, I, I just wanted to say that um, what Northeast Care Management can do is, you know, work with people in, if they're, they need help with their daily um, care until they can make the next steps. Um, we can keep them safe in their home, um, help them with medications, um, get them um, help with their ADLs so that they can avoid maybe a crisis situation so that they have time and the families have time to, you know, do the planning, do the next steps. And, you know, our main concern is keeping the seniors or their loved one in, in their home until the time they're ready to go on to the next place. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. And it might be, it might also an option is to downsize from a bigger home to a smaller home and have mm -hmm. in-home care. Exactly. Um, we work with several agencies um, um, that even provide live-in care. Um, so okay. it all depends on the individual, you know, how, how important it is for them to, you know, stay in their own um, environment. Um, Sometimes it's just getting them the support they need so that they find that, you know, what's important to them isn't really staying in the home, but, you know, having a life. And, um, you know, we've worked with Wendy um, on, you know, next steps to in that direction, assisted livings. Um, so we're happy to help. That's great to know. 